The purpose of this short video is to explain the meaning of the Protection Range Estimator's Warning Zone, and I'll do this by walking through a thought experiment of a demonstration of the Protection Range Estimator device, as though we're doing an experiment. So we start with a flat test range, add ECM, and uh, add the Protection Range Estimator device, which I'll call the PRE device for short. We then measure the heights of the ECM and PRE device antennas and optionally also the range between them. Uh, we then turn on the ECM and the PRE device defines the warning zone, which is shown in yellow, and which separates the safe area shown in green from the unsafe or dangerous area shown in red. In the next step, an instrumented mock IED receiver is placed on the test range and we test whether the trigger signal is able to cause a detonation signal in the receiver, the IED receiver. In this case it doesn't, so we'll color the distance between the ECM antenna and the IED re re uh, receiver green. Uh, a detonation didn't take place, so we're safe. Now the experiment proceeds by moving the IED receiver progressively farther from the ECM and repeating the test until we observe the trigger signal is received and processed. In other words, the receiver the ID receiver has moved from the safe region to the danger region, colored red. At some point in the test, the IED receiver will be placed at a range where it can be intermittently triggered. This indicates the ground truth ECM protection range. Now, the range over which the triggering is intermittently successful is shown in yellow in the bottom part of the, of the slide here, and it is narrower than the PRE device indicated warning zone. This is a key point here. This is because the predicted warning zone encompasses all possible attack scenarios, which includes, but is not limited to, the specific attack scenario used in the experiment. Remember, there are a lot of possible attack scenarios, and each one will potentially result in a different ECM protection range, maybe different by a little or maybe different by a lot. So back to our test results. The observed ECM effectiveness transition in a single experiment will be narrower than the PRE device's indicated warning zone. If knowledge of the attack scenario can be improved, the indicated warning zone becomes smaller. So now we can talk about the meaning of the PRE indicated warning zone. By definition, the indicated warning zone contains the ground truth ECM protection range for all possible attack scenarios with a predefined probability, for example 95% probability, which in this case is the same thing as 95% confidence. The reason it's a probability is because we do not and cannot know the specifics of an attack scenario and therefore we must accommodate, for example, 95% of all possible attack scenarios. For any technical people out there, the protection ranges form a probability density function, and the PRE device defines the warning zone to include, for example, 95% of the possible protection ranges. And just to hit it one more time, the variation in the observed protection range is caused by uncertainty about the attack scenario, threat characteristics, antenna height and gains, and virtually all other parameters that affect the ECM protection range. This can be graphically illustrated by adding another step to the experiment to demonstrate the effect of changing the attack scenario, and it works like this. Now, keeping in mind the results of the previous test, we conduct the experiment in another experiment in the same way, but with one change. Let's say we move the trigger man closer to the IED receiver, so the trigger signal seen by the IED receiver is now more powerful than before. Because the trigger man location has changed, the protection range has also changed, like this. However, the new protection range also lies within the warning zone predicted by the PRE device. We get two answers, but they're both inside the, uh, the PRE device's warning zone. So in summary, the PRE device warning zone encompasses all possible ground truth protection range values with a specified confidence. And this concludes the explanation of the PRE warning zone.